Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're the ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. So I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. Enough is enough Welcome back to the No Holds Barred Network with another episode of Under the Ropes. This is episode 20. I'm your host, as always, the EVP of Giggles, the queen of the indies. <laughs> I am the owner of the list of husbands and I'm, be, I'm dying already. So um, so we have <laughs> the law of Ray Ramundo. And then we have number one husband, Anthony Gangone, is back. Welcome back. What is going on, guys? Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. What's going on, so, Ray? I'm good, but again, you're 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 not good at this. You're what do you mean? You gotta you gotta do this properly. What you already thought about it with saying my name. So for those that aren't aware, I am the Law Ray Ramundo, and he his proper title is. Formerly known as the Rogue, the One Above All, Damn. dripping in gold, Anthony can go. Yeah, I was gonna say that uh, <laughs> Tiffany, you kind of gave yourself the grand intro, and then you're like, oh yeah, by the way, here's Ray and <laughs> Anthony can go. Because you're making me it laugh. Was like, like all her gimmicks were there. Damn. For us, it's like <laughs> damn savage, man. Wow. They're both going heel on me. Terrible. You're right. I am bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we decided we're going to do an update because it's been almost a year that it that you've been on under the ropes and uh kyle's not here because he's not allowed because he threw me under the bus within the first episode <laughs> but uh we figured you know we have you come back so um so let, let let's uh i'm sure a bunch of viewers you guys have seen episode one if not Please go back and check that out. Uh, so for all the new people, uh, instead of the usual, how do you start? Um, instead of the usual, how did you start? Could you tell the viewers a little about what's gone on since the last time that you've been on Under the Ropes? Uh, I mean, uh, since then, I've uh, just been wrestling every weekend. I was able to go to a few more states, uh, newer states, California, and uh, winning championships at one point I had four or five championships at one time so just doing my thing on the independence and I'm very happy about uh, doing it independently awesome awesome I know like I've followed you a lot more which has been great because um, I've seen so many great promotions that I didn't even know existed which is great um, and I've found a lot of other independent wrestlers that I became like really good friends with and that I've supported as well. So, I mean, I thank you for that. I always tell you that. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, if you could tell those promotions to give me a cut of their money, <laughs> I can always use extra. And I apologize to all the new friends that you made, oh, no. uh, for, for causing that. My goodness, they're. Uh, I think uh, some of them like me. I, I hope they like me. <laughs> I think. I think so. <laughs> I think you tolerate me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in your career so far, what could uh, what could you say has been your most memorable um, in or outside of the ring moment? Uh, I don't know. I I think I think um. The greatest moments I've had were probably moments that fans uh, didn't know what was going on backstage. That was a lot of issues going on, whether that was in my own personal life or even backstage at a professional wrestling show. And how I was able to not let that impact my performance 
And there's so many stories of that. Uh, just one uh, in particular that I'll use is that I, um, I wrestled Johnny Gargano. And I was actually at the hospital the day prior to that. And they didn't want to discharge me from the hospital. So I wouldn't have had that match. And I think that match is uh, very important to me personally, especially those fans that were able to see it live because it really was a great match, crowd interaction, all that. And I almost missed it because I wasn't uh, discharged from the hospital. And, you know, most people didn't know what the story was. Uh, unfortunately, that match was um, never found, so it's not online. But there, there is clips of it, and uh, so it did happen. And I just, uh, I guess that would just have to be one of those special moments that uh, was shared through everybody that was there that day. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw some yeah. clips. I saw our friend uh, Matt Awesome had posted some clips of that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Don't Sorry, die. <laughs> I'm not sick. I just drank some water. Went down the wrong hole. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh my goodness. So, yes, yes, that was that was one match that I wish that uh, piracy, uh, piracy did reign supreme over uh, the actual camera people that were there. But yeah, <laughs> oh, man. yeah, that was a great match. I remember I was there live for that. That was oh, so. That's awesome. how I became your favorite wrestler, right, Ray? <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so uh, from there, uh, can you tell us about the influence the legendary sweet and sour Larry Sweeney had on you? Oh, okay. Well, um, uh, roughly around 2007, 2000, early 2008, somewhere in that time frame, I finally checked out Ring of Honor. Um, I was in my teen years, I think, at that point. And, um, I, you know, I just thought that the product was amazing. They just got a pay-per-view deal. And there's two things on that show that really stood out to me. And one was the main event was Austin Aries versus Nigel McGuinness, where Nigel McGuinness actually got a concussion like a few minutes into the match. And he wrestled this incredible match, which he doesn't even remember wrestling. And it was just a really awesome match. I definitely would recommend it it's a uh, rising above and the other guy that stood out was larry sweeney and um he was a manager but i as a child i loved managers uh because i had all the i wasn't born in the 80s or early i was born in the early 90s so i wouldn't remember this stuff but i had a bunch of tapes wrestlemania things of that nature, and i loved like bobby heenan and sherry martell and I loved managers, and at that point, WWE still now didn't have managers, and Larry Sweeney was old-school representation of that, and I just fell in love with that character and its stable, and later on in life, I realized that uh, we kind of uh, are similar in a lot of ways because he did have uh, bipolar disorder, which is something I was diagnosed with in 2017, and um, yeah, I mean, I just... You know, I connected to that character and in some ways that person uh, a lot. And uh, he's very uh, important to me. And I wish that he was still here. I wish that um, his diagnosis didn't help uh, ultimately with, unfortunately, his demise. But uh, a lot of people remember him. I know that at various times I've spoken to some of his friends within the business because I started wrestling right when he passed away roughly and uh but yeah there you have it again i just for me knowing you i've known how you even wore a similar attire i would say something inspired by larry sweeney so it's very like the guy's definitely touched a lot of us promo wise just his character still lives on to now i'll say that Especially yeah uh, yeah i did actually, actually those tights were directly an influence of yeah. that uh it was, I think, it's pink and and uh, and purple, yeah. and uh, yeah. So that's awesome. Um, so we have a fan tweet. <laughs> Everybody throws me under the bus, so <laughs> I think you're used to it by now. As long as you know me, somebody's always throwing me under the bus. <laughs> I mean, it's Twitter, so somebody's <laughs> gonna throw you under the bus, right? 
Okay, so this is from Dottila. She said, how has your life changed since becoming Tiffany's number one husband on her list of husbands? <laughs> how has my life changed? <laughs> well, I would say, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but there was there's a stereotype about married men become more attractive to the opposite <laughs> sex. And it seems to be that way because ever since I became the number one husband, uh, I've, I've had more... Um, uh, interest from uh, other people. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> Tiffany. Although I was number three or four at one point, so uh, you know you have to understand. Uh, there's other fishes in the sea as well. <laughs> you did say that you didn't think that you were gonna last long on this list, but Alex Zay went on there for like a month, and then you started losing all your championship belts, and then I felt that it was my fault, and then Alex Zay got hurt and busted his foot, and I was like, that's it, the world is out of place, I was like, we gotta put him back, so going forward, you're not going anywhere, everyone else is up for grabs, so... There you go. I'm sorry. All right. It's my I'm gonna fault. I'm going to hold you to that. Okay, you're, you're staying there. <laughs> Nobody can handle it. It's not happening. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> you got belts back, so, like, you're, you're good. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, got a, I got a few. I got a few. <laughs> <laughs> Dripping in gold. So, but no, even with the list of husbands, it became a thing that going forward after the first interview with you, now. All the wrestlers are coming up to me saying, how do I get on your list? Or am I on your list yet? So it became a real thing. So <laughs> you made it explode. So oh, here well, we are. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he wants his royalties now. Okay. okay. I do, yeah. <laughs> here, I got some water. I mean, I like, I, I like the money as well. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I could like give you like I have fat pharaohs sitting on the exercise bike. I, I can't give you any money. I don't, I'm not making any money. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I accept action figures as well. Okay, all right, cool. All right, wait. So there's no more Skittles because I said that I was. You, I brought you a bunch of Skittles and you told me I was gonna make you fat. So no more Skittles. Yes. Going forward. And then forward. I just, I just kind of made myself fat. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're working on it. But yes, less Skittles, uh, more, more action, salads, more so salads, and more action figures. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Got you. <laughs> so since the last time we spoke, you've become very familiar with the combat zone, even going as far as having your first death match against the bulldozer Matt Tremont. Can you talk us through how that's been and what it's been like having a death match? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not um, particularly a uh, death match wrestling fan, but I, I do respect all those guys that do do it because – it is painful and, um, you know, wrestling's painful and dangerous as it is. And in those matches, uh, you know, especially even more that you're going to get hurt. And uh, I always am into stories. And if it was the right story, I'm pretty much I'm a sucker and do anything. And uh, yeah, and I don't think I could have had a better wrestler to do it with and Matt Tremont who probably is the best death match US death match wrestler right now and great storyteller and um I couldn't ask for a better person to do it with and uh you know I kind of uh I kind of enjoyed doing it I don't think uh I would do it often as as some of those guys uh, it's not particularly for me but I wouldn't say that I would never do a death match again uh, the barbed wire hurt like hell. Uh, that was not fun, uh, especially ripping out your own uh, arm from that barbed wire. But, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was a nice uh, first step, and maybe my next death match will be even better than that. So, Awesome, awesome. I was sad we didn't make that one. I wanted to be there. So, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I mean, have it. I have it here. I had to pay-per-view it. I had to see it. I had to see the first death match. So, cool. Ray, you were with me, right? When did we watch that? Uh, yeah, we saw it together. Yeah, yeah. I had to watch that. It was... Definitely. Had At the same it. time, it's so, I guess, sick in my head that I was like, I kind of want to do that now. <laughs> 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 there was like, yeah. ouch, but. <clears throat> Ray, you should do it against Anthony. What do, what do, what do we think about this? Uh, uh, no, we'll stay friends. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt his chop. It's okay. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I don't want him to light you. Um, 
Like two. Speaking of friends or, or, or partners, whatever, let's go into my next, into the segue. So, the Crusade for Change, Force, House of Gangone, One Night Only. You've been a part of many factions slash teams. Would you say you prefer that or to be a lone wolf as you currently are? Um, well, I would say that I think um, they were all cool in their own way, some of them for a particular amount of time. I would say I loved uh, One Night Only. I really enjoyed that. I wish more people would have saw that. Uh, just for the entertainment base, not for anything else. I think me and Quinn had great chemistry, both as opponents and teammates. And we just had fun. It's definitely a, a version of me that most people don't get to see when I wrestle. Uh, but I would say, for me, it's better to be uh, on your own. Um, less people to worry about. Uh, less egos. Um, just I'd rather just deal with, with my own stuff and doing my own thing. I think some things that have held me back besides some things myself is the fact that I was trying to create these stables that were cool and helped everyone, and in turn I kind of hurt myself uh, by doing that, which is fine, but I just want to kind of focus on me from for, for right now. Okay, interesting. I love that one night only. That was so much fun. Yeah, that and was... you only got to see it on the last night. <laughs> I know, I know. That's okay. That's okay. It's late, late, better late than never, right? So I love. Yeah, this. there you go. See? Yeah. So I it brought uh, brought in my horizons by leaving like New York and just following some of the stuff in New York. So, um, and now they're they're they they opened up a school, right? Excellence. So, uh, yeah, I, it's not, uh, I don't think it's an official school yet. They've been having tryouts and stuff, but I did go to the building and it's a great building. Um, I think that, uh, once it's totally finished, that it's going to be, uh, a, definitely a hub for wrestlers because there's a bunch of stuff there and hopefully the word gets out and then fans go and check it out. It's kind of in the middle of a, a quiet town. So uh, it, it will take some time, but I think that once people see it, it's definitely going to be, it's, it has a lot of potential. It's like a little mini performance center. I mean, I had a lot of oh, fun. Interesting. I had a lot of fun at that show. That was a lot of fun. I mean, I talk about it even with Ray when we've done the indie talks and um, we talk about different sides of independent wrestling, that there's pretty much a little bit of everything for everybody. So if you want like fun and kid-friendly excellence is definitely one that I felt. Um, and then a lot of the wrestlers were having so much fun. And I, I, I feel like that plays such a huge part as well is that when you start seeing the wrestlers having fun in the ring, um, then the fans are going to have fun too. So. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, <clears throat> so in the, in your time in the business, what has been one word of advice that you care to share that you, you have been, that, uh, you have been passed down from another wrestler? Hmm. Uh. Passed down from another wrestler. <laughs> um, well, to quote my great, great friend, Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, don't trust anybody. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of negative, but it, it really isn't. I think for, and this is advice just in life, it's just uh, trust your own instincts and um, not uh, maybe prove have someone prove that they're trustworthy is not the right word, but just pay attention to their actions and their words, and and realize uh, who's really there for you and who isn't. And through that, uh, I think it, it it definitely helps with overall. Just realize that not everybody's your friend in wrestling, and not everybody's who. Uh, just because they're a great wrestler in the ring doesn't mean they're a a uh, great person outside that ring and, and vice versa. They could be a great heel in that ring, but they are actually a decent human being in real life. So remember it's art people, or it's supposed to be, you're not, you're playing something that you're not, or at least supposed to be. There, there, there you go. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Uh, my next one, it goes more into, cause this is something even me and Tiff always ponder about your innovation. Yes. So, what drives this innovation of yours? What causes to create these moves? Like, for example, the Dreams by the Waterfall or uh, the Bridge to Nowhere of your variation of the Anaconda Vice? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 
so I enjoy being creative and I these moves come about by kind of necessity. It's kind of like how can I be different from the next person? How can I be different from the next indie wrestler? And that comes down to everything from look, tights, to even wrestling moves. I know many people say wrestling moves don't matter, but uh, they do matter in the right place. And, um, you know, uh, that's where they really come from. And I just want to be different. And uh, it's a lot like comedy uh, and comics. It's just you want to create new material for people that they haven't seen or, or, or heard of yet. And that's what you kind of that's kind of my the way I look at it. And, you know, at times it, it kind of like uh, sucks sometimes when I see uh, these moves being uh, done on on a bigger scale, uh, whether they came up with them th themselves or they happen to see it, um, that, you know, on a Hoke video or something. But um, Damn that, it, being, okay. Gotta stop that, <laughs> that being said, you know, uh, I'm very proud of that aspect of of my uh, wrestling ability that. I have been able to come up with a decent amount of moves that makes me different from everybody else. Yeah. It is true though, yeah. in this business you see like either everyone's trying to create or they'll just do something they've seen. Like everyone does now either the super kick, the Canadian destroyer, even the DDT has been just butchered now by everyone that does it. Yeah, it's I like mean like you don't see anything different. You don't see yeah. that unless with certain people like yourself. Yeah, I mean that's you know, at, at the end of the day, like, um, you know, we all use vertical suplexes or, or, or neck breakers. Like, that wasn't invented by us. But, like, we're certain, let's say, quote-unquote, falsies and stuff like that. You try to be different from the next person because there's so much innovation out there that you're kind of forced uh, to do it. And you're forced to be and think outside the box. And that's kind of the way that... Uh, I look at it, and I think it really pushes the art forward to look at it in those aspects. No, it's true. I mean, I mean, obviously, you're my favorite independent in the scene right now. And because of the fact, and I, I like I said, because there's so many other wrestlers that I enjoy, but I always say this about you, and I know I had tweeted this at you once, that you never cease to surprise me, you know, to amaze me because you always change every match and because I do see you a lot through through the weeks at different promotions it's always different except for like dream, if dreams by the waterfall get hit yes that's expected but pretty much your in-ring work is so different and that's one of the things that kind of like caught me um, to enjoy your, your art and a lot of other wrestlers that we could talk about like Brock Lesnar I guess I would use or John Cena like they use the same move set and it's kind of boring to me seeing it over and over and over again so i actually really enjoy and especially as your job as a wrestler is to get my attention to kind of like follow you and what makes you different and that's one thing that 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 i enjoy so much about you and also other wrestlers that that i see so i i don't like seeing the same boring move sets every time especially if i'm supporting a wrestler um it gets yeah i mean that's that's just part of the art form in my opinion and like just to use you as an example, there's, I do see people that I see I saw last week at a show, and I don't want to give them the same kind of match or, or same move set. And I do try to change it up and 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 make it exciting because even that one fan that saw that match from last week, I don't want to do repeat stuff that I did last week. And uh, yeah, I mean, Dreams about a Waterfall, you're going to see because no one right. has kicked out of that move. And so it's it's done me well. And uh, the only thing that sucks is that anytime you have a new commentator or they kind of have no idea what to call my moves. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they're like, what a maneuver or uh, <laughs> that looks like this move. So, <laughs> yeah, I think Striker over the weekend, he called it the GTS. I'm like, no. Well, I, I, I mean, it is. It is a version of it, of course. Sure, but no. yeah. Yes, Matt Stryker had a, a few, uh, which is not his fault. But uh, he, uh, you know, my moves are innovative, and uh, I'm sure he hasn't seen most of them. So, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, for a new commentator, it's not fun calling my matches because you don't yeah. know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> Did you ever come up with a name for that new move that we saw at IWA? Uh, which oh, which God. one is this? Ray, what was the one on Mantis? Oh, I, oh I, I know what she's talking about. The... Um... The chicken wing uh, face buster that you do. 
Uh, I do think I have a holiday version of it, which is called Kiss from Kringle. Uh, but I don't know exactly. I don't know if I actually named it yet, but uh, okay. I actually got that from um, this wrestler, uh, Nicholas K. I asked him if I can use it, and he gave me permission. So, yeah. You know it's in the video game now, right? Is it? <laughs> it's in 2K. Damn it! We're going to call it. The, oh, wow. Uh, look at that. We're going to call it the game. Gone. <laughs> That's it. First thing when I saw them added, I'm like, okay, now I know where to, which costume to put that in. <laughs> but it was like, oh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's whole case, whole case fault. Oh man, it's posting yeah, it up and it's it's going out there. Okay, <laughs> so speaking of putting out there fan tweets, we have um, from a good friend, Tarvis. Yeah. So if you ever got casted as the main villain in DC, Marvel, or any other comic book publisher, who would it be? So the main villain in from any comic, who would I be? Okay, uh, I would probably say, uh, well, I guess my character would, I guess I would say Magneto, uh, just because uh, he's not one of my favorite characters, but when I think about what my character is and who I am as a wrestler, uh, Magneto is on the right path on things. Uh, oh, look at that, Davey. Uh, but <laughs> he uh, he kind of goes about it the wrong way. And uh, I think uh, what I say is the truth, but I may not go about it in just in a correct way. Interesting. There you go. Um, so it seems like we have a segment of fan tweets. So we do have another fan tweet, actually from one of my other list of husbands, <laughs> Hank Flanagan. He said, he beat me up for the IWA title. Was it fair and square? If he's a fighting champion, does he want to fight one more time? No. <laughs> Short and simple. I like it. Um, <laughs> there you have it, oh Mr. God. Flanagan. Oh, and I think that broke too. Oh, God. I died. I'm dead. <laughs> Oh, the men <laughs> bled for Christ's sake. I think that's it. Oh, Left man. That's it. The it's over. Salt. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> that was funny. No, uh, yeah, next fan tweet. <laughs> we had a lot of these. You're, you're very famous, Mr. Ganga. Um, uh, from our friend JPQ, what are some common workplace annoyances you can find with other wrestlers that you might also find with your coworkers in everyday nine to five? Oh, man, there's so many answers to this and so many that would get me in trouble. Hmm. Yeah, maybe don't say those. Like, <laughs> uh, that's a loaded question. Oh, man. Damn it, JPK. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. I'll say something nice. Uh, showing up on time. <laughs> that's what I would say. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. That was a really good question, though. We were actually yeah. talking about that. Thank you, John. That was a good question. It's a loaded one, though, because it's like, how do you say this or not get uh, <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> the stuff that goes on in the business. Mm, too much. Um, okay. Now, back to our normal questions. Back to one of mine. Um, your thoughts on tattoos? Um, I think they're awesome. Uh, I think that um, maybe one day I, I might get one or two. I, I believe, Ray, your tattoo is amazing. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think they're awesome. I just, I haven't gotten them myself. Um, but yeah, I think they're, they're great and, and cool. Yeah. They're addicting. So prepare yourself. If you do one, stop telling him, trying to give him positive. So he finally gets one. Yeah. It's, I was uh, pushing that agenda. I've been pushing it for a while. Now. I'm thinking about getting your face on my, on my chest, Ray. What do you think? <laughs> It's kind of fair. It's, uh, yours is on my on my arm now. So yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll get another one of Tiffany on the other <laughs> side of my chest, but I'll make it very vague just in case she ever puts me back down. No, so I it's not happening. Girl. I'm I'm saying it right now. It's not happening. No one can handle the number one oh, husband's man. spine. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's gonna pull a machete so that way he can just fix it up later on. But, oh, I'm God. sorry. It could be, be Selma Hayek later on or something. <laughs> Damn. Oh my goodness. All right. So, 
We want to know your thoughts on JD Alpha still not playing No Mercy. Uh, he's a punk, <laughs> and, and uh, it's it's just it's just terrible that what he's doing what he's doing to America really <laughs> to not play America just the world to not play <laughs> No Mercy and uh, you know the kid has a lot to learn the kid has a lot to learn <laughs> about life. <laughs> and hopefully one day he figures it out because he's making his fa- he's making his family cry daily for not playing No Mercy, the greatest wrestling game of all time. <laughs> <sighs> That's the real pandemic right there. It's just really <laughs> not playing No Mercy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Done. true. <laughs> oh man. Oh, we're horrible. Um, okay, so back to seriousness now. Um, who is someone without a question? If you could wrestle again in a heartbeat, who would it be? Uh, who would I wrestle like right now? Just anyone. Anyone you have in the past that you're like, if you could one more time, you would choose like that. Oh, uh, that would be Mark Quinn, probably. I just. He's just fun to work with. Um, great person, and um, yeah, I just would love to do it uh, again, where more people were watching. Because when we wrestled, you know, we had a very small audience at that point, and now obviously he's doing his thing with Isaiah on uh, on TV. So uh, if there was ever a chance to maybe do it at a bigger indie or, or, or even at some day on TV, that would be awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Hopefully awesome. maybe it can Two happen again. There. That's awesome. Hopefully, hopefully we can, we can see it. I would love, I would love to see it. Um, so who would you say everyone should keep their eye on in the year 2020? Mm, who should they keep their eye on? I'm going to say people that I don't, uh, I'm probably, I don't know if they wouldn't consider me a friend and I don't really know well, but just from their wrestling matches, I enjoy Daniel Garcia a lot from, um, all those Buffalo boys. Uh, they were all trained by, uh, I guess he's called the blade now in butcher and blade. Uh, uh, Pepper Parks or Brandon mm-hmm. Sutter or whatever mm-hmm. else his names were. Uh, also, uh, um, D.L. Hurst. He uh, is someone that I really uh, like. And I saw his match against uh, Layla Hirsch from Beyond. And as a performer, I thought he did so well. And, uh, yeah, those are two guys that I've uh, I've enjoyed their work. Uh, that maybe most people wouldn't see how great they do these small things uh, that I personally enjoy. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome. So, so many, so many well, people. Well, they also keep it out. Yeah, they there's so many people out. to keep an eye out. I can't keep up. There's just too many. It's <laughs> hard. It really is. Um, so we have another fan tweet from our girl April. She said, "Where do you see yourself a year from now? And also, what else do you want to accomplish on the indie scene?" Um, well, that's, that's, well, that's weird because like a year, a year ago, roughly around this time, I would never have expected where I'm at now. So, um, I don't know. I think, uh, just taking over the world is probably, uh, the independent world is probably where I would want to be. I, I do enjoy the indies a lot. I do enjoy the freedom and I know that's probably not an answer that most people would say, but for me, I do I do enjoy it, and um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm just being one of the top indie guys um, a year from now. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, uh, he's gonna take it over. Yes, take it over. I I would say that he this is. This is your year. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I know. Well, if they ever throw wrestling shows again, I maybe. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't help. I hope so. I miss it. I feel like I'm going to start, like, scratching my arm or something. Like, I'm getting withdrawals, man. Like, I'm so used to, like, coming to all the shows every weekend that my, my damn planner book, like Ray will tell you, my planner book has dates up to October now. And this is a very sad, sad time for me, like, and everybody else. It's sad. She has more bookings than we do. It's like- <laughs> 
Uh, we need that 15% now. We need that finder's fee. That's what we gotta do. See? She did it all on her own. No, no, no. I give I give credit to Gangon as whatever anybody says. See? So again, I always okay. 15% Gangon. You get 15%. All right, all right. That's 15%. Come on. All right, I got. I'm more I got... like 20. <laughs> okay, okay. I got action figures. I got you. What don't you have? Okay, cool. <laughs> I prefer NECA's or Marvel Legends. All right, cool. All right, Ray, we're going shopping, but we can go outside again. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. We, we mentioned the action figures. We go into NECA. Let's go into that topic. Yes. Get a tour from wrestling a bit. Let's go into horror. Uh, what started your love for horror? And who would you say, uh, what would you say is your favorite movie out of that genre that's truly genre bended? Oh, okay. Well, I would say that when I was a kid, I was introduced to Abbott Costello movies, and they did a whole bunch of like comedies with horror movie monsters like Frankenstein's Monster, Wolfman, Dracula, blah, 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 blah all that. So that's what really got me into it. My dad um, just showed me those movies, and then back in the day, they used to show horror movies on network TV late at night. And that's where I kind of discovered like Fright Night and, and those movies. I would say the movie that's genre bending for me, and I just did a podcast for this, would be uh, Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein. Uh, I can watch that movie nonstop all the time. I've seen it the most out of any movie. It's comedy. Um, it's not scary at all. Um, you know, back then, I guess some of those characters would be scary. It's a 40s film. So, but. Uh, yeah, I just I love that movie. If you guys could check it out, I do think a lot of the jokes do hold up. There are a lot of great one-liners in that, and uh, they're just a great comedy duo. Uh, and I don't like the Three Stooges. So, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned you mentioned the podcast. What did inspire that? What started to start um, chilling, killing? Um, I just thought it would be a cool hobby and to kind of get that um get that out of my system because it's just like it was just me and ed fucking not real well in ed's case he really doesn't watch movies but uh because he's talking the whole just time. halloween it's yeah just halloween. <laughs> so but we would talk about horror films and i'm just like why don't we just record this and it's just like we don't expect anything from it just if anyone happens to want to listen to it listen to our bullshit about movies and you know, and it introduced me to a lot of movies that I uh, I wouldn't probably normally have seen. A lot of indie horror com um, horror films that I really really enjoyed. So, That's some good ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah. see now you have to have me on, and we have to talk about Pet Cemetery, the original one. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We'll, yes, we'll definitely I love that movie. It's one of like my faves. There's some really bad horror movies. <laughs> what was the Thanksgiving with the um? Thanks killing. I remember like Ed yeah. was like, no, Tiffany, just no. And I'm like, yeah. it's so bad, it's good. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> it's one of those like really yeah, bad ones. Yeah. There's some fun, definitely some great horror movies. Um yeah. so, check out that podcast. Yes. Like top tens over there too. So check yeah. out it's an awesome time. the links in the description below, guys, the Twitter account as well. So I put all that. So go give go give a listen. Um and you're on Patreon and most of the audio, right? It was Spotify. What was it? What is it's it on all, again? It's 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 on Apple. It's on Google. It's on iHeartRadio. It's on Spotify. So everywhere that you usually get your podcast, you should be able to hear it. Awesome. Um. So since our previous podcast, with the recent shows I've seen you appear on, I see that charity work truly has a special place for you. Could you elaborate a little bit more to the viewers at home? Yeah. Um. I'm just not an asshole. <laughs> uh. No. <but> that was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, here's, here's the thing. When it comes to charity, I feel like, uh, to quote uh, Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. And I am, I get it, I'm a no-name fucking indie dude, whatever, but with a little bit of, for lack of a better term, clout I have, I would like to do something positive with it. And... um. I really care deeply about all these issues and I would like to help any way that I can. And, um, you know, I just want to help people 
and really help people. Like there is no agenda to it. Like the amount of money that I've lost to, you know, whether it's giving out free t-shirts or, you know, I've, I've gotten, um, letters, well, not letters that would be old, uh, messages from, uh, from people that are going through a really hard time and like they would want to buy a t-shirt or, or whatever. And I would try to add something special to that, whether, you know, it was a nice birthday card or, or something a little extra to that package. But yeah. And I also feel like there's so many, um, especially in wrestling, there's so much negativity that if we can do something positive and I do feel that many use charity work, as a way to draw people in and it's not genuine i mean some of my i mean i had a horrible experience doing charity work and it's just like we're doing charity work here there's no reason why anyone should be stressed out or, or whatever or feel negative about anything and it's just like there's like you know anytime that i've ever done anything for charity i've always shown where the money has gone. I've always shown receipts. And this is obviously, there's not towards, there's plenty of places that do great stuff. I'm just saying in general, what I've realized, and this is in life as well. You know, there's so many times where you see great, uh, quote unquote, great charity uh, organizations uh, not do what they're supposed to do with that money or not do the help they're supposed to do. And uh, that really, you know, is something that I'm passionate about that I would want uh, charity work and helping others to do what it's supposed to do. And that's something that I definitely am passionate about. And I would like to change, um, in wrestling or in life or, or wherever, wherever I can, I can do that. Awesome. Awesome. I yeah, love that. Definitely, you do definitely that. something that hopefully yeah. we can all do more, you know, yeah. it's always something that there's never enough to definitely try to help others that, are going through something or are less fortunate than we are. Enjoy what you have. And if you can always help out, it's always amazing yeah. to see when there's even in wrestling charity shows that are doing what really they need to do. Get that word out, get that assistance for those that need it. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, like, awesome. it's always give back because I've had my share too, that there was a time that I needed help and I've gotten the help from charities. So you know, I always feel that you have to pay it forward. So when I see like a lot, even within wrestling, like I'm all over it because I just feel like I have to pay it forward because at one time I needed help. So I love, I love, <clears throat> you know, when a lot of these wrestling uh, shows, they do stuff for charity. So definitely big on this. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, there's, unless you built your own house and you, made your own food like someone helped you at some point along the way no one has done anything really on their own and that's from whatever breakfast you had someone had the had the pick or 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 a package or whatever like everyone is helping each other out and i think if we can do more of that in the world it would be a better place absolutely well said well said um okay for my last question uh, it's, it's it's starting to come down we're time it's time to take it home <laughs> it's, uh, but we must okay so um my last question well it's more of a statement breaking the fourth wall a little more here um and i truly just want to say thank you for you being you and being a great friend a great brother and above all to me at least a mentor Hope one day to make you proud in this crazy business that we love. Well, I mean, um, I didn't expect that. Uh, <laughs> thank you for, for saying that. I appreciate that. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, I don't, you make me proud for just being you. And I want you to feel like to make yourself proud every day. That's the most important thing because you have to look yourself in the mirror uh, and uh, I think you're doing a, a great job, and I've always told you that. And I think, you know, your family and uh, people that have passed on in your life, they would be very proud to see who you became and who you're becoming as a person. Oh, I need some tissues now. I love you guys. <laughs> like, damn. Like, damn, Bray, you just put me to shame. <laughs> like, I 
<laughs> hey, we, have, we have to make it somewhat Look, real. Damn, we get a little mushy here. Where, where, where was the question in that? There was no question. <laughs> I gimmicked it. I said, well, it's more the same. It's not even a question. So... Oh. See, see, like, and, and like I even said, if it wasn't for Anthony, you could say whatever you wanted. They like, I don't care what you say, but it always, it, I feel like it starts with you, right? Because six years ago, I was a fan of yours, and even though that you only know of me since last summer, I've been a true fan, which started with SWA, for me with you. Oh, wow. So that's that's what I would say. So it always goes back to you. And even though, like, you know, like, we became friends now as well. So, I mean, if, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am either. So, and I would have never met Ray. I would have never met great promoters. I would have never made, you know, friends. Like, even, like, stuff like meeting April. Like, I really do feel like this plays such a big part, you know, in, in, in this community and stuff like that. And I'll always say that, that I will always give you credit. And I know you're a humble person. And you're like, no, it's not me. But I really believe that. So, I have to say I that. Well, I mean, um, I, I mean, you guys know this is going on the internet. You're supposed to say horrible things. Oh, okay, about me. you're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Damn it, that's it. Worst I've ever seen. That's it. You take it off, number one husband. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. Oh, <done. laughs> oh man. Okay, so, <laughs> so we have like one final question. So. What have you been doing to stay busy with the recent uh, pandemic? And what will be the first thing you do once this is all over? Um, well, I mean, I've really I've only had this week uh, really quarantine. Like, I haven't really had to go out for anything as far as like work related or anything like that. I mean, mostly I'm watching like streaming services right now. I'm trying to read some stuff. Um, I'm trying to do some more, if I can, some charity work during this time that that um, doesn't involve money, whether that's someone offered for me to read like children's books and and just, I guess, to entertain uh, certain kids that are away from school right now. So that's probably something that I would like to do, um, hopefully in the next coming days. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really all I've been doing. Uh, First thing, well, all I've been doing that's PG. Uh, the first, <laughs> <laughs> so, but the first thing I would do, um, I don't, know, I guess, put my wrestling shoes on and 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 go wrestle around somewhere. Good, we'll, we'll be there when it all comes back to normal, right, Ray? Get in the car with me. Um, I don't know. I have to listen to him. I don't want to. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I would never put you like in risk. Oh, oh damn, because then I'm like hearing from him. I'm nope, nope. Oh nope. yeah, no. If, if I if Ray goes to the hospital, no, no, I'm, it's not happening. No, I'm no. gonna beat him up so badly <laughs> while he's in that hospital. At least I'll be in the right place. Like you don't <laughs> move. Fix me you up. don't move, Ray. You don't move until I tell you to move. <laughs> you can't breathe, Ray. Stop. No, he can breathe, but he can't leave his home. <laughs> Oh, Thank God gosh. for Skype and all this stuff. So. If, if the world has to be repopulated, it has to be done by Ray. So that's why <laughs> it has to be, I have to give him the clear to step outside. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I guess this is where we tell you to plug your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Anthony Gangone. I believe on Instagram it's there's an underscore at the end of that. Um, I would plug my merchandise, but please do not spend any money on my merch unless you are still working, uh, or you're, you're fine financially. There's far more important things to spend your money on, like essentials, food, and, and all these other things than my merchandise. So whenever this stuff ends and people are in a better place, then spend money on my merch, which is at ProWrestlingTees.com. I think it's slash Anthony Gangone Pro as well, but Probably please is, yeah. focus <laughs> focus on being you know your family and your friends and getting your money right because I know personally I know two handful of people that lost their job during what's been going on so uh, you know just just do your best. Awesome, thank you so much for doing this podcast. It's always a pleasure to have you on. You're always welcome on the podcast. So. Well, 
probably bother you again in a couple months or whatever for uh update with you because there's always there's always stuff and i'll be around so hopefully uh wrestling gets back soon because i can't <laughs> i'm losing it <laughs> no thank god thank god for all the apps and stuff too so like there's you know even a lot of uh promoters are putting uh free matches up or they're streaming on fight so it's great if you guys get bored as well so love the independent scene so thanks again ray thank you <laughs> ah, of course always no thank you thanks thank you tip for having us because again this is your show this is what you do and thanks for us uh giving us this little platform here to talk a little bit ah, it's and just shoot pleasure. the ship. I love it. I absolutely love it. So thank you guys again. Thank you guys for watching under the ropes episode 20. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And yeah, <laughs> I'm bad at this though. <laughs> Anyway, can't even do an outro. Uh, oh, damn, man. man, the salt. <laughs> Jeez, that Bye, makes guys. it even, that makes it even better. <laughs> so, my guys. There's something you will